Oh, something as easy as going through the drive-thru with my wife, it becomes a thing. And I try to be nice, right? I try to be patient. I try to get on top of it. Hey, baby, be ready. Okay. <laughs> One more car, it's going to be our turn. <laughs> know what you want. Oh, well, what do they have? <laughs> what do they have? It's McDonald's. <laughs> it's the same thing since we were four. Oh, it's our turn to order. She acts like she's never seen this menu. She has to lean over me. <laughs> Do they have whole wheat buns? Whole wheat buns? We're about to eat trash. It's garbage. You can't take whole wheat buns and then pick stuff out of the garbage and then put buns around it and make it healthy. I don't say that because I love my wife. What comes out of my mouth is, do you have whole wheat buns? <laughs> Look at that, baby, they have whole wheat buns. Oh, okay, I'll have nuggets. <laughs> oh, it's not her fault. She blames her sign. I'm a Virgo. That... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how Virgos are. We... Oh, even a nice restaurant. And we try, you know, we try to go on date nights. Even the nice restaurants becomes a thing. We get dressed up as soon as we sit down. You want to share a salad? Wouldn't it be nice if the two of us shared a salad? No. When have you ever seen me get off the couch, go to the kitchen, chop myself up a salad, and then give you half? I don't say that, it's in my head. <laughs> what comes out of my mouth is, yes. <laughs> she orders the salad that we're supposed to share. The waiter says ranch or blue cheese and she looks at me like I have the answer. <laughs> I picked the salad. <laughs> I know not to answer. But then I think to myself, well, maybe today's my day. Maybe today I get to make a decision for us. You know what, buddy? We're gonna do blue cheese. No, ranch. Stop! You gotta laugh, though, I'll tell you that. If you wanna make it in marriage, you better be able to laugh. And if you can't laugh, call it a day. My wife is funny, man, and it helps. My wife made me laugh so hard one time I almost wrecked the car. I had to do a radio interview at six o'clock in the morning. I work at night. I told the wife, I said, why don't you come with me? You can help me drive back. My wife said, okay. I'm driving back, right? And my wife goes, are you okay to drive? I said, yeah, I'm good, but I could use a Red Bull or a Monster. And I turn around and she goes, Rah! you scared the crap out of me. You almost killed both of us. And that is hilarious. So I won one of them big stuffed animals one time at the fair which I hated because I'd carried around the whole time. And I win something and the guy goes, what do you want? And I said, well, give me that goofy looking minion right there, that little minion. He says, what? I said, that goofy looking minion with the purple hat right there. He goes, that's the manager. <laughs> you ever ride the rides at the fair? They scared the heck out of me. My little boy's, daddy, can we ride the roller coaster? Yeah, we ain't riding the roller. You do realize, son, they put that up in an hour in a parking lot, all right? <laughs> Probably got a bunch of parts left over on that daggone thing. Remember last Christmas when I got you that bicycle and put it together in 50 minutes and you got on it, the wheels fell off and you racked your nuts? Remember that whole day right there? That's gonna happen to you on that roller coaster right there. He's like, come on, daddy. No, we're not doing it, that's it. So we're on the roller coaster there, and uh, oh, I was so mad, I almost puked on that thing. It went upside down. Ah! Oh, I get done, I go, you didn't tell me it went upside down. The guy running, it goes, it's not supposed to. <laughs> How about that Ferris wheel? You like that Ferris wheel? Who, me either. Oh yeah, the Ferris wheel. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I like better in the whole world than being completely bored and terrified at the same time. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the same thing my wife told me on her honeymoon right there. Right? 
<laughs> you ever get stuck on the Ferris wheel? Oh, man. I was up here with my kids. We were stuck. They was crying, freaking out, trying to calm them down. Don't worry, kids. We'll be all right. I'm sure that guy running it with seven fingers and a pentagram tattoo. All right, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll have us down in no time here. As soon as he's done smoking that joint, I'm sure we'll be right down out of this deal. Anybody ever been to the fair on senior day? <laughs> I went on senior day. Most popular ride on senior day is the ambulance on the way out of the fair. <laughs> that gum, there's one leaving the scrambler every two minutes in there. <laughs> Best part about senior day, though, it only lasts from 3.30 to 5, so that's a good thing. They got special prizes on senior day. I saw an old guy bust a balloon with a dart and he won a pair of Depends with a picture of Def Leppard on it right there. <laughs> the food's different on senior day, the fried foods, it's unbelievable. Anybody ever have fried Lipitor? <laughs> they got a guy guesses your weight at the fair, they need somebody to guess your cholesterol level in there. I had a buddy of mine used to do that. He used to try to guess people's weight at the fair. I went with him one time, and this girl come up there. She goes, what do you do? He goes, I guess people's weight. She goes, how do you win? I mean, she was a looker. You could tell. <laughs> he said, well, I guess your weight, and then you get on a scale. If I'm five pounds either way, I win, you lose. She goes, I'm on duck. He's like, all right. Uh, oof. 317. She gets on there. <laughs> you lose 345. <laughs> I'm like, he loses? Are you kidding me? I got John Deere attachments way less than you do right now. Congratulations, you're blimp worthy. But you can gain weight at the fair. It's all fried. Have you you like to you ever eat the corn dogs at the fair? Oh, I love him. <laughs> Have you seen the size of the fair corn dogs? <laughs> Holy smokes. I'm not saying they're big, but I was eating one at the rodeo when a horse come by and winked at me. I really want to be healthy. I, honestly, I do. I start out, like I'll get up in the morning, I have oatmeal, I have a banana, and then around nine, <laughs> I go, did I eat anything? so dry here, isn't it? It's a good chapstick place. A couple hours in this weather, you're chapstick and everything. What are you doing? My cheeks are chapped. Well, you're gonna need a bigger stick. the butt chapstick, please? <laughs> Don't you hate this? You're walking down the street, your friend goes, can I borrow your chapstick? Can I wear your underwear? <laughs> it's a non-borrowing item. You always give it up. Keep it. <laughs> I have to be healthier now because my doctor's yelling at me about they're the ones who... This is how he talks to me. Louie! Got a microphone and everything. <laughs> the show business doctor. Louie, I'm worried about you. Well, don't charge me then. <laughs> now I had a heart episode. You know what that is? That's what they call it when you have really good insurance. <laughs> that even doesn't even sound bad. He's got a heart episode. No big deal. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night, and I go, whew, I didn't eat tacos. <laughs> I drove myself to the hospital, you know, so I could have that last cigarette. <laughs> well, if you're gonna go, it's a good thing KFC wasn't open. Yeah, they found him in the car. He kicked the bucket, holding the bucket. <laughs> Did he leave a note? Well, there was something written on the window in gravy. 
It was either sorry or coleslaw. I didn't know this. If you're a fat person and you go to the hospital and you say chest pains, you're in. <laughs> fat guy, chest pains, come on down. <laughs> what about the guy with no head? We got a bucket of eyes coming out for him. <laughs> the nurse takes me in a room and she goes, here, sir, put this on. On what? <laughs> she puts the uh, EKG thing on me, tears it off, you know. I go, what does it say? We don't read them. <laughs> By the way, this is all prosthetic. <laughs> After the show, it comes off. I just air it out. It's like, I feel so free when I get it off. You know what I mean? It's getting harder and harder to motivate to exercise. In your 20s, you're like, you know, I want to be with someone physically fit, so I'll be physically fit. And then in your 30s, you're like, I want to fight off aging. And then in your 40s, you're like, it's over. <laughs> And now I'm at the point where I look at morbidly obese people and I'm like, they seem happy. <laughs> That's one way to live a life. I used to exercise to lose weight. Now I exercise so I can continue to fit in cars. <laughs> Still a fitness goal. I've been in better shape in my life. I go in and out, you know, it's been a while, not last year, but the year before my big accomplishment is I ran the New York City Marathon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Half of you are like, no, you didn't. <laughs> I did, you bastards, all right? I ran and completed, all right, fine, I didn't. <laughs> but I thought about it. Which I guess is technically different than running it. Turns out I couldn't run the New York City Marathon because uh, I didn't want to. <laughs> Which is the main reason I don't do a lot of things. I just rarely admit it. It's like, hey, Jim, why aren't you coming to my birthday party? I didn't want to. <laughs> we never really reply to invitations that way. Don't want to go. <laughs> Completely available, just not interested. <laughs> Really wish I wasn't there, so I won't be. <laughs> I know people who have run the New York City Marathon. They always bring it up, they're like, yeah, I ran the New York City Marathon. I was asked, did you win? <laughs> no, but I finished. What place you come in? I don't know, sounds like you came in last. <laughs> really what you're saying is you lost the New York City Marathon. <laughs> if I were you, I wouldn't bring that up. But that's why some people run marathons, so that they can say, I ran a marathon, which to me is not a good enough reason. <laughs> Heck, I can say I ran a marathon. In fact, earlier I did. <laughs> Didn't feel good, it felt dishonest. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is marathon runners are liars. <laughs> All of them. It's too far, it's way too far. 26.2 miles, that's too far to run, jog, or frankly drive, let's be serious. <laughs> You know what? I'm not a runner. I'm not a runner. Half of you are like, we never thought you were. <laughs> At this point, we're not sure if you're a walker. <laughs> but running is huge, right? There are stores just for runners. There's magazines dedicated to running. Runner's World, a magazine all about running. And if you thought running was boring, wait till you read about running. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, is there any information we don't have on running? Oh, you're supposed to use your arms when you run. <laughs> what, what? I think I've been running backwards. <laughs> no wonder I keep losing. <laughs> the runner's high. I'm sure that's not a myth. Let me get this right. You're confusing exhaustion for high? <laughs> Have you ever been high before? <laughs> How can you confuse I can't breathe 
with joy. <laughs> hey, we ain't stopping for shit. We'll pee on the side of the road, we're going to keep pushing this bit. We ain't stopping to eat, we got a whole lunar fall pan full of fucking chicken wings. We got a cooler full of no-name soda. You know them, you know them no-name soda just say lemon lime and cola and grape and orange. Root beer. Then they got that one you ain't never heard of, cream. What the fuck is cream? We don't, we don't even know what cream is. We don't know what it is. And it's always that last one in the fucking night. What's left, cream? Yeah, there ain't no orange left. Who are they all the motherfuckers? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be a but it be a whole case of Pepsi, right? You know, but that Pepsi, you bet not touch that motherfucking Pepsi. That's big mama Pepsi. You touch that Pepsi, you might as well walk the fuck home. <laughs> One year we was riding my cousin saying, she don't need all that damn Pepsi. You know she got diabetes. We ain't seen that motherfucker since. Anybody seen Junebug? Don't you say nothing about no Junebug. <laughs> we gonna be on the highway. We gonna be leave, we gonna leave 4.30 in the morning. We gonna be on the highway. We, I ETA for Orlando, Florida, Disneyland. Gonna be a week from tomorrow. <laughs> cause we gotta take back roads cause Uncle June got warrants and we don't want him. <laughs> Since he's driving us, we don't want his ass to get in no trouble. So if you want to go, we going. We should be at Aunt Cheryl's house <laughs> that, around that time. And we could all stay with her. She got a two-bedroom assisted living. <laughs> and I'm sure she ain't going to mind us staying with her. We get all the way down there. We can't even go to Disney World. Because Uncle June, post, he got tickets, but... <laughs> But he ain't looking today. They've been expired since 2006. <laughs> He's like, shit, I ain't know they had no expired tags on them shit. I, I got them when I retired. I thought they were good till then. What the fuck he retired from crisis back in 2004? What the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, shit, well, we can still go. Yeah, we gonna go and take pictures out in front of the gate. We can't get in. The kids have it up, they pulled right in. I think that's Mickey Mouse over there, right there. No, that's a girl with Afro puffs. That ain't no Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but we can't, we can't even stay long, because always that one punk-ass family member didn't take all the days off, so we got to leave early. <laughs> we got to get home Sunday night. Why, Cynthia? I got to be at work on Monday. Half of you knew we was taking this trip a year ago. Why your black ass didn't take off? I didn't have a job a year ago. <laughs> You ain't gonna have one now. <laughs> I just got hired at Wendy. Bitch, fuck Wendy. <laughs> they gonna need somebody else to chop them onions because we ain't going home. She picked up an animal. She picked up a stray cat. She picked up a stray cat the other day. Oh, why are you going, oh? She picked it up. It's not, oh, it bit her. It bit her. There was tons of blood. I have to, this is not a joke. I took her to the walk-in clinic. She had to have two stitches, but not only two stitches. Not only two stitches. Do you know why she's not here in Atlantic City? Because every week, every four days, she has to go to a clinic. They give her a shot in the stomach for rabies. She may have rabies. Think about that. She might have rabies. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm a germaphobe who won't touch anything, who soaks everything, who purells everything, and I'm sleeping with a woman that might have rabies. <laughs> I have single friends. They worry, you know what they worry about? They worry, they told me, they worry about STDs, STDs. I said, where, do you, where are you gonna get an STD? How are you gonna get an STD? You know what they said? From strange pussy. Where did I get the rabies? <laughs> That's one you could share with your mom. <laughs> Look at her lovingly and go, I love when Howie talks about strange pussy. <laughs> oh my God. And I came home the other night and she was getting ready for bed and I didn't realize she was getting ready for bed. She was brushing her teeth and I came in late. I didn't know, because I came in behind her. I said, hi, Terry. She turns around, all this 
white foam in her mouth. I screamed like a banshee. I told her, that's why I pissed on you. That's why... But that's family. You know, family's all like that. I did the 23 and Me. Has anybody done the 23 and Me, that DNA testing to figure out who you are? You did it? You did it? What did you find out? What did you find out? You're not 100% Italian. What, what, what did you, were you surprised? Yeah. You thought you were 100%. What are you? What, what is the other? Greek and Armenian. You're Greek and Armenian. You're everything. everything. Yeah, and you found it out. And, and was that surprising? Was that exciting? And what did you do? Did you spit in the thing? Spit in the thing. You spit in it. You spit in it. Yeah. Okay, that explains. Yeah. No, no. I See, I didn't. And I found out that I'm 10% uh, Native American, and there's a 90% chance I have a bladder infection. <laughs> I'm talking about my wife, family. My wife also, she buys things like animals. She'll buy weird animals, not only rescue. You know what she bought? A hedgehog. She, uh, uh, whoa, what? A real hedgehog with no, no food, no cage. She came to the hotel room with a, a hedgehog, just holding a hedgehog. Just, why are you all quiet? Do you all have one? Am I the last one to get on the hedgehog, hedgehog bandwagon? She, she, and I said, why would you buy it? She said, because our son is doing so good in school. Does that make any sense to anybody? What level of academic achievement does one have to acquire to deserve a hedge? And he's not that good in school. I'll tell you about it. He's not. He's already finished. Can I tell you something? My, my, wife, my wife wanted my son <laughs> to be, I shouldn't say this because it's televised. I'll tell you. They want, she wanted him to be homeschooled, right? But here's the thing. He was not accepted. I've done every kind of exercise in the world. And when I was y'all age, I was so gung-ho. And I wanted to go and do, and I wanted to be firm and tone, and then one day I just said, I don't care. But, and that's a good feeling too. But when I was y'all's age, y'all was big into CrossFit. Do y'all have CrossFit here? Ooh. I hope y'all don't end up in a boot. All right, it is bad mamma jamma. And they came to Knoxville, and they, these young boys in their early 20s opened it up, and they were darling. And they both had little, but fannies that look like baseballs. And I wanted, I wanted my fanny to look like a baseball. So I got my good friend, Becky. Becky and I joined CrossFit together. For those of you who don't know, it's like military moves, push-ups, pull-ups, that kind of thing. They'd put a big tractor tire in the parking lot and they'd set Becky in it and I'd pull her across the parking lot while she held her purse. Well, these boys came to us one day and they said, hey, we're gonna have a contest and whoever wins it gets three months of free training. And um, it's gonna be uh, for the women and for the men. It's gonna last 10 weeks. We're gonna take your before and after picture and then the whole gym's gonna vote on whose body has changed the most. We were like, yes. So one day <laughs> we show up, didn't know it was picture day. I had on a horrible looking sports bra that had lost all of its support. And I should have, I should have bizzed it the night before. It had a gray tint to it and it really wasn't gray, it was white. And, and if I'd have known it was gonna be a picture day, I'd have gotten a spray tan. But anyway, we get, they said, take your top off to me and Becky, and they go, just leave on your sports bra and your spandex, and we're gonna take your picture. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I didn't want those little boys to not ever wanna marry and have children. <laughs> so I said, Becky, me and you, we're going in the back. I said, I'm taking Becky's picture and she'll take mine. So we went in the back, in the back room, and Becky went. And I said, what are you doing, Becky? Don't you wanna win this thing? I wanna win it. So I took my spandex and shoved it under my stomach and went. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it was a sight. These kids put it on the internet. 
because that's what kids do. So if y'all Google it, and you see this poor woman with her head cut off with these two feed sacks, oh, it was a sight. But what they said, they go, okay, you're, and when I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, you are what you eat, and I look like a big bun, is what I look like. But they said, you're going to eat paleo, and it's what God put upon the earth to sustain us. So if you can run it down and kill it, dig it out of the ground, pick it off of a bush, you can eat it. So that's lean meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, berries, and seeds. That's no grain, no grain, no dairy. When's the last time any of y'all ever got off of white flour? Anybody? Oh, and you still can yell. Okay. Good for you. Oh my gosh, I had the shakes. Becky and I both were shaking. We drank a bunch of coffee. Then we had to have our teeth whitened. Anyway, my husband said, you are so hateful. Will you please eat a piece of white bread? I mean, it was awful. I mean, I never, I, I mean, oh, how horrible if somebody had to get off of heroin. I mean, and I don't know what that's like, but I watched Shaft when I was little, and I, I remember it being a booger when somebody had to get off of heroin. This felt similar. It may not have been. Anyway, they took the after picture, and I made sure I had a spray tan. Let me tell you that, honey, because a spray tan takes 12 pounds off of you. Anyway, I had a spray tan. I had on a really cute sports bra and spandex. And uh, I took mine, and I'm ashamed to tell y'all, but I won that thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so ashamed.